Good morning everyone and welcome to Rathod's IMS. So in this session we are going to see keratophytes. So keratophytes plays a very important role to clear any competitive examination. For example for UPSC, state public service examinations and for banking examinations, SSC. So if you are preparing for any competitive examination, keratophytes is very important. And without knowing about this keratophytes, you can't clear any competitive examination in this competitive world. So for that, reading one national newspaper is very important. And we are going to see the Hindu analysis of 18th October 2023 today. So first of all, we are going to see important articles which are relevant from our UPSC point of view. And around till December 10th, we will be not getting much important articles from our examination point of view because of elections in the five states, right? So don't waste much time on this unrelevant articles. So focus on only relevant articles from our newspaper point of view so that you will be getting extra half an hour or one hour time to spend on your GS. So utilize this time to prepare for your GS or optional. So the first topic it is about Supreme Court bench what it said about homosexual marriage. So homosexual marriage is nothing but same sex marriage that means marriage between two female or marriage between two male. So especially in our society we have transgenders, LGBTQ plus community right. So here in other countries there was legalization of this homosexual marriages happened. But this article says that cannot legalize same sex marriage says Supreme Court bench. So now Supreme Court bench says that we can't legalize same sex marriage so because it is a work of legislature. So actually in our state we have three important organs. So one is legislature, next one is executive and next one is judiciary. So here now Supreme Court is saying that so the work of judiciary is to see whether the acts, laws, policies which are came up by government they are according to our constitution or not. So here we have legislature it have to make the laws. So function is make laws and we have executive that is to implement laws. So the important function is to implement laws and this judiciary it need to interpret the laws. So interpret means nothing but they will see whether the laws are according to the provisions of our constitution or not. So if it is according to the provision of uh, constitution, okay, then nothing will be there, no problem. But if it is not according to our constitution, so Supreme Court will be involved and will say it is null and void or unconstitutional. Okay, so this is the thing that you have to know regarding this article. Okay, that is three organs, legislature, executive and judiciary. And you have to know functions of these three organs. And next important article here is Supreme Court gives Narvaker last chance to set timeline for anti-defection proceedings. So here you have to focus on what is this anti-defection law. That is very important because now and then you can get this uh, anti-defection law in news. And it is not present in our original constitution. So it has been added by 52nd Constitutional Amendment Acts. And you have to know some important constitutional amendment acts because previously before 2010 and 2012, so there were even questions asked from so which constitutional amendment act led to what. So from that point of view, also UPSC asked a question. So Maybe in the next year also this type of questions may be asked, who knows, right? So from that perspective also this topic is very much important. And here you can see one interesting image that is red color in the sea part. So it is also called as red tide. So this red tide is environmental concern. So why there is red color? Because of algal bloom. Okay, algae which is increased growth here. So because of that it is appearing red color. So this type of red tides is very much famous in this Gulf of Florida, Gulf of Mexico 
and now in the sea in pondicherry which turned red because of because of uh, increased micronutrients and because of abundance of algal bloom okay here you have to know what is a steratite and why it happens so what are the causes and what will be the impact of this steratite and this is our most important topic from your environment and ecology so that's all in the first paper and you can simply leave CT page and as well as states page. There is nothing much important. And even this editorial page also, most of the articles are political articles. So here there is no way of even studying editorial today. And there is one article which is important. It is about demolishing the frame from outside the constitution. So this article which is talking about especially, especially it's talking about news click. So already we know that so this news click has been alleged with this unlawful activities prevention act right and we studied that topic number of times so it is time to revision okay and if you move on in this opinion page there is one article regarding wildlife protection act and recent amendment to this wildlife protection act in 2022 and we are going to see those provisions and this topic is important and if you go on to text and context, there is article regarding allegations on Adani coal imports. So here the cause of concern here is Adani is importing the coal which is at higher rate, higher rate at than market cost. So it is importing at higher cost than market price. So this is used for preparation of thermal electricity. So it is used for preparation of thermal electricity. So here what happens so whenever there is increased cost automatically there will be increasing the price of electricity correct. So this is one cause of concern. I hope you understood the concept here. And next topic here is how synergistic barriers are affecting progress on SDGs. So SDGs are nothing but sustainable development goals. So we have 17 sustainable development goals that need to be achieved by 2030. But the problem here is, yes, there is no progress that is seen. Okay. So here you can see like there is lack of progress in this sustainable development goals. So this is the thing which said by world leaders. For example, there is no commit for eliminating of poverty, hunger, malnutrition, improving of standard of living of people, etc. And here, the what are the policy making that is seen in the country? It is not much robust and it is not clear on the outcomes. So, because of all these things, what happened? So, achieving of the sustainable development goals will be delayed. That's it. And here, your homework is you have to buy hat all these 17 sustainable development goals okay so that is important from here and you can move on to news page so in this news page also there is nothing much important here there is article regarding Gaganyan mission and we discussed this topic number of times and there is one interesting article here that our prime minister he directs Isro to land man on moon by 2040 work towards interplanetary missions so our prime minister is giving some suggestions to isro and india wants to be forward in this new space era okay and if you move on even the business page i found no article and even in the world page also so these are the limited articles that appeared in our newspaper which are relevant from our examination point of view and now let us see analysis of these important topics okay and one more thing here is if you want to get uh, get this notes so you can join the telegram channel okay that telegram channel is there that is Rathor's IS Academy channel okay Rathor's IS classes so if you type this Rathor's IS classes in the search box you will get this telegram channel there you will be getting this PDF. So many students are asking about this PDF. Where can I get this? 
so you can get that from this telegram channel okay now let us see the first topic so first topic is cannot legalize same sex marriage say supreme court bench and i want to give you one homework that is in which countries there is legalization of this homosexual marriage happened so please let me know in the comment box don't forget about this so here the context says that majority opinion of this five judge bench which says that it is the work of legislature to recognize to recognize such marriage and it is not the work of courts so court will not be working on that because right to marry it is not a fundamental right okay so because of this here supreme court said that we can't legalize this same sexual marriage and if you see the details it says that a constitution bench of supreme court held that only the legislature can recognize or regulate the same sex marriage and the supreme court bench since there was no fundamental or unqualified right to marry so courts they cannot intervene in this matter okay and even this bench which failed to reach a consensus on providing even long abiding relationships between the same sex couples the status of legally recognized civil union so these are the details and now let us see some basic facts so why we can't go for same sexual marriages so why we can't go for legalizing of the same sexual marriages so here religious definitions of marriage it is traditionally between man and a woman but not between men and men and women and women okay and even the special marriage act of 1954 it was created to overcome the limitations of religious personal law and it is not creating a new institution of marriage so because of this we can't go for legalization of homosexual marriage and this one is legitimate interest of state so state has a legitimate interest in regulating marriage and personal relationship so which is seen in laws regarding the age of consent okay actually this comes under the state list okay or the state laws so state can take this but not entirely center and next one needs right to privacy so if you are talking about right to privacy supreme court in one famous judgment that is ks puttaswamy judgment it said that right to privacy is a fundamental right right so here one more important thing here is privacy exists but it cannot be extended to marriage so because of the supreme court said that we can't go for legalizing of this same sex marriage and even if there is same sex marriage happen so here if the marriage is happening between the two same sex how the next generation will be reproduced so there will be no reproduction right so at that time they need to go for adoption of children So here there are some issues with adoption of children for this same sex couple. Okay? This is one important thing. And next one here is gender terms. So argument that gender terms like mother and father, husband and wife that will be problematic if you are going for this same sex marriages. So these are some arguments which are against this homosexual marriage. And next let us practice one question that is discuss the challenges faced by lgbtqia plus community in india with respect to legalization of homosexuality and the same sexual marriage analyze the impacts of this of its legal recognition and on the social and political landscape of the country so here introduction you can write about homosexual marriage okay why it is in news like supreme court denied the legalization and next one in body you have to address challenges what are the challenges and next one is impacts so here the keyword is analyze so that you can write both positive impacts and negative impacts and finally you can conclude your answer So in this way you can write answer for this question and this is the structure 
So try to write answer for this question within 250 words and post your answer in the comment box. And next topic is Supreme Court gives Narvik a last chance to set timeline for anti-defection proceedings. So here you have to focus on anti-defection law. There is no need of remembering who and on whom this anti-defection law. Everything is not at all important from your examination point of view. Just to see what is this anti-defection law. So anti-defection law is not present in our original constitution. In our original constitution, there is no concept of this anti-defection law. But it had been added through 52nd Constitutional Amendment Act in 1985. And it became the 10th schedule of our Indian constitution. So here, which article talks about disqualification, that is Article 102, subclass 2, and Article 191, subclass 2, which will be talking about disqualifications of MPs and MLAs respectively. And if you are talking about defected, who can be defected? Elected member, independent member and nominated member. And there are some exceptions for speaker or chairman. Okay. So because whenever the speaker who is elected, okay, then that time here he have to resign from the political party. So because of this exception will be speaker or chairman. And whenever party is merging with another, that is around two thirds of party which is merging. Okay, so these are the exceptions under this defection law. So the presiding officer will be deciding the questions on disqualification. So who will be the presiding officer? So we have Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. In Lok Sabha that is speaker. In Rajya Sabha we have chairman. So chairman will be nothing but our vice president. So the issue here is. Supreme Court interpretation in G. Vishwanathan judgment in 1996 case. Okay. So, this is a one important case which talks about this anti-defection law. And what are the advantages if you have this anti-defection law? So, we can ensure stability and party discipline. And disadvantages here is it will be affecting the freedom of the members. And if you are talking about which are the grounds of disqualification. So first one is elected member voluntarily giving his membership. So whenever he is coming out of a political party, then he will be disqualified. And if any independent elected member joins any party, independent member should not join any political party. And if there is any nominated member, he joins political party after 6 months. So within 6 months, he can join. But after 6 months, if he is joining any political party, then he will be disqualified. And if elected member abstains from voting, if he is not voting in such house, okay, or if he is uh, doing against the veto, okay, so against the whip, okay, then he will be disqualified. So, these are the grounds of disqualification. So, what are the issues with this anti-defection law? So, first one is there is ambiguity about party. Because there is no clarity whether the original political party refers to the party at the national level or at the regional level. So because of this in the regional level if there is any person who is leaving the political party. So if it is coming under the national party or a regional party. So there is, there is no much clarity regarding that. And this one here is claim about merger. So merger can take place only when an original party merges with another political party. So in that case, at least two thirds of the members, they have to agree for the merger. So sometimes it may not happen because it is a very large chunk. And this one is it also undermines your representative and parliamentary democracy. So here MPs or MLAs, they have to follow the party direction blindly. So because of this, the freedom of vote of these members that can be affected. And next one is there is controversial role of speaker. Normally the speaker he will be from the ruling party itself. So because of this now there is no clarity in the law about the time frame of the action of action of this uh, speaker or chairman to take decision. So it is one cause of concern now. And it also affects the normal functioning of government. Okay. So here one famous uh, slogan here is Ayaram Gayaram. So actually at that time one person who changed a lot of uh, many parties in single day. 
so because of this it is also one cause of concern during 1960s okay and i found this image which is very much interesting this is about red tide so red tide is nothing but harmful algal blooms so this occurs when algae grow out of control that means the fast growth of algae is happening and not only growth even they produce some toxic or harmful effects on the people fishes shellfish marine mammals and birds etc and many people they call these blooms as red tides and scientists they prefer the term harmful algal bloom okay so this is about this harmful algal bloom and if you are talking about what are the causes the first one is eutrophication so eutrophication is nothing but whenever there is increased nutrients in the water that condition is called as eutrophication so whenever there is increased nutrients like phosphorus nitrogen that will leads to the blooming of this algae that means higher growth of this algae and next one is temperature so temperature is also more likely to happen in summer but normally in normally in the winter there is decreasing of temperature so whenever there is optimum temperature in summer season that will increase this growth of algae that will leads to this algal bloom and this one is turbidity so turbidity is caused by the presence of suspended particles and organic matter in the water column so whenever there is increased particles or increased turbidity or suspended particles then that will leads to this uh, what happened algal blooms here okay and one more thing here is whenever this turbidity is very high very low here so more light can penetrate to the water column so because of this it creates optimal conditions for this algal growth so turbidity should be like less and next one is what will happens if there is algal blooms so first one is so they produce extremely dangerous toxins so because of this whatever the, um, the biodiversity which is present like fishes so and so that will be killed right and whenever this contaminated algae which is eaten by other organisms include humans so that will also cause some severe reactions in the body okay poisonous reactions and this uh, this algal bloom which will be impacting aquaculture and is also causing harm to the marine life and even there have also been complaints of respiratory distress in humans because of consumption of this toxic algae and algal blooms they deprive aquatic organisms of sunlight and oxygen so because of this that will lead to suffocation for the animals and because of that suffocation that will leads to the death of animals and that will forms dead zone okay dead zone in the water so and even what happens so if you are using that water for drinking water purposes so we have to go for treatment so for that treatment it will be like very costly so these are some important things that you have to remember regarding this algal blooms and next topic is when tigers and jackals get the same protection so this article is talking about prevention of uh, sorry this uh, protection of wildlife act so this act is very very important under this we are having the different schedules actually there was prelims question which asked from this uh, protection of wildlife conservation act so now this article is important from your environment and ecology let us try to see this wildlife protection act of 2002 that is amendment act so what are the objectives of this act so it want to protect endangered species so according to iucn category so we have lot of uh, animals for example endangered critically endangered extinct and wild vulnerable okay so like that so based on the categories we need to provide protection to save that so and so animal or so and so plant so here we are focusing on endangered species and this bill which is also focusing to enhance punishment for illegal wildlife trade so it is also focusing on illegal wildlife trade and we are focusing on better management of protected areas so it provides for certain permitted activities like grazing or movement of livestock and bona fide use of drinking household water by local communities 
so we are focusing on even ma maintenance or management of protected areas so we are focusing on certain activities like grazing livestock drinking water household water etc and we are also focusing on protection of forest land so it is also very much critical because it equally inculcates inculcates itself the protection of rights of people who have been residing there since ages so we need to also think about the people because local community people they know about that region very very well right what are the problems they are facing so what are the solutions so which kind of animal species there so what are the changes are they are facing so because of this whenever we are coming up with any policy or any program any scheme we have to involve this local community so that then only that program will be get successful and what are the proposed amendments so first one here is this amendment which proposed a new schedule for the species listed in appendices under this sites <laughs> okay and next one is section 43 of this act amended which permitted the use of elephants for religious or any other purposes and it also proposed to enable central government to appoint a management authority under section 9e and they also focusing on allowing of central government to appoint scientific authority and this scientific authority will be giving the guidance on matters regarding the survival of specimens and they also empowered central government to regulate and to stop import trade or possession of invasive or alien plant or animal species and even this act which also provides about the penalties okay so whenever there is violation of this act yes there will be penalties and for general violations so maximum fine is increased from 25000 to 1 lakh rupees and this one here is in case of specially protected animals so there is minimum fine of rupees 10000 has been enhanced to 25000 rupees so these are some important things which added in this recent amendment act to this wildlife protection act and i want to give you one question which asked in prelims 2020 that is if a particular plant species is placed under schedule 6 of wildlife protection act of 1972 what its implication so option a is a license is required to cultivate that plant such a plant cannot be cultivated under any circumstances and it is a generally modif uh, gen genetically modified crop plant such a plant is invasive and harmful to the ecosystem so in this way also you can get question in your upsc prelims so please let me know what is the correct answer for this question in the comment box don't forget about this and now let us move on let us see next topic it is about the allegations on adani coal imports so this article is also very important okay so here you have to see like so whenever we are getting imports with a, which is a higher cost than the market price so what will be having the impact that will be having the impact on finally the people so people they are going to pay for the electricity right electricity bills So, if you see, context says that the recent report, Financial Times, stated that Adani Group appeared to have imported billions of dollars of coal at the prices above the market value. That means above the market price, so they imported the coal at a higher price. So, the reportage has based on examination of thirty shipments of commodity from Indonesia to India. So, it is between two thousand nineteen and two thousand twenty one. and even it also stated that there is long standing allegations of making a customers and as well as businesses to pay high for electricity so they are paying the electricity charges which is high because of high import bill of this coal and this allegations denied by adani group so please let me know so what will be the implications of increasing of coal price Okay, so how it is going to affect negatively on our economy? So please let me know about this thing in the comment box. And next topic is India to double infra spend to one forty three lakh crore rupees. So here it is talking about spending in infrastructure. So I want to give you one idea. 
like whenever there is increased spending in infrastructure what happens that will leads to the developmental projects so whenever we are going for the construction of this development projects it will create employment for labor that will leads to the revival of our economy so whenever there is revival of employment so whenever there is increased employment so increased labor participation so they will be getting salary and these people they will be going to the market and they place demands for these goods and services right so whenever these demands which are increased by this uh, labor okay then what happened that will leads to the finally increased production so increased production that will leads to increasing of our outcome in the economy so in this way it is a vicious cycle that i can say and if you see details it said that of total rupees 36.6 lakh crore so they will be the green investments so whenever you are talking about infrastructure projects so we have two types okay types of infrastructure so we have two types so first one is green second one is brown field green field and brown field so green field means nothing but entirely new project but this brown field is second hand okay and we are focusing on especially green investments and infrastructure spending will double okay in 2024 by 2024 to 2030 okay so this is the thing which mainly said and you have to see like what will be the advantages of this infrastructure projects so please let me know in the comment box don't forget about this and next i want to announce about this course that is daily mains answering course that we came up in this ratos ias so actually it is one year course and you are going to get 52 weeks of schedule and based on that schedule you are going to get daily one mains question on sunday you will be having essay or case study so you have to write answer and you have to send answer to our mail id so that there will be clear cut evaluation will be done and we are also going to give you the detailed feedback where you are missing and what are the strength and what are the weakness and here we are also having live doubt clearing sessions so in that sessions we are going to write essay and case study online and next one here is so here we are going to see even how to structure answer everything and that will be conducted from 7 pm to 8 pm on every sunday and this course at most beneficial and you can improve your skills and you can improve your thought process for sure so if you are students who are facing problem regarding this mains answer writing as a beginner so you can join this course it is at most beneficial and the cost of this course here is 8200 rupees for one year and even if you can't pay that amount in one go you can pay in two installments and one more thing here is so we are going to come up with this ethics course on online okay live ethics course that is going to be started after this dasra vacation so the cost is around 5000 rupees so it includes each and every sub topic in your ethics and even we are discussing the examples and as well as we will be seeing the previous questions ethics case studies everything okay so the cost will be around 5000 so it will be completed within 45 to 50 hours so try to join that course also so if you have any queries regarding that ethics course so you can contact me on this number that is 8074765513 and this early bird offer of 5000 will be there till your dasra festival so after that there will be no offer so try to join that course as soon as possible so that i can ensure you so you will be having no doubts in ethics and you can get 150 to 160 marks if you join that course so gaining good marks in ethics is very important there we are going to discuss even how to write answers in your ethics and how to address the case study so there are certain process will be there step by step procedure we are going to discuss that okay try to join that course and if you have any doubt you can call me on this number 8074765513 so that's all and now if you want to get the notes i showed you the telegram channel right 
so now i will be showing you this is our youtube channel rathor's is academy so you can subscribe to this rathor's is academy channel so that you will be getting notification whenever we are posting any videos and next one here is this is our website rathor's is academy website so here if you click on this courses so these are the wide range of courses that we are offering so if you want to watch the demo videos first you have to do login or register so first you have to do register and after that login and click on play course so that you can watch three demo videos without paying a single penny and here we have this is mains answer rating course you can buy the course here and if you see here you have ethics course it is around 6500 rupees but those are recorded videos but if you want to have the live classes and if you want to clear your doubts and if you want to have discussions with me you can join this live classes that is going to be started after this just our vacation and here we have this foundation course for upsc csc 2024 and 2025 so here you will be getting more than 600 hours of recorded classes and you'll be also having live classes for some modules and you can also join the live classes and it includes prelims test series, main translating codes and the main test series. Everything is included and the cost here is 45,000 rupees. And if you're going to pay this amount in one go, then you will be having extra 10% of discount on that. And you can pay around 40,000 for that course. And next one here is you can pay in installments also for that course. So why are you late then you can come and join if you have any doubt regarding your GS. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. If you really like this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to this Rathor Science Academy and try to share this video with your friends as well. Thank you so much for watching.